Happy Super Bowl Monday. Happy Super Bowl Monday. Can you Monday. say that or do you got to say the big game? No, we can say it, I think, but you just can't like advertise it, right? Can't you? Or no, we can't even do that. Welcome to the post big game. Welcome to the post BIM game show. The and post BIM game. Go show big post game. game. Yeah, Gabby, bleep out when we said Super Bowl, but leave it in. How's that? Are we allowed um, to? We should find out if we could say it. Or not. I mean, I think why can't you say the word Super Bowl? It? Well, because it's owned by the NFL and they want to, uh, they, they like they make it so you have to pay to use it, or you can only use it if you're affiliated with the NFL. That's why all the. So radio if I say like the word Olympics, I need to like pay someone. Oh no! You just get sent to a, a detention camp in China. I get sent to that the place gulag. in Barstow. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Okay. So well, you guys just I guess saw... now you guys know mm -hmm. what Rob and I's little secret project was when we were both in New York. Well, we said it was only your secret project. I didn't even. Oh, let you're it right. Be known we did. We did. I was doing something. But... You were a surprise in the commercial at the very end. That's right, yeah. sir. Well, what was it like? I mean, to be a part of a Super Bowl commercial mm -hmm. is uh, a once in a lifetime thing, but it was yeah. also like tied into the Sopranos. And since we're the number one non Sopranos Sopranos podcast, we've got to cover this. What so was it like working yeah. with David Chase? So you're like, saying I'm not doing another Super Bowl commercial next year, you're telling me? Just oh, once in a lifetime? No, no, I didn't mean that. I'm I'm okay. sure you're going to get a yeah, lot of offers. I'm spending like we're doing one every year. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, this guy. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, this was like a really cool and unique experience. Rob and I found out about it like right before Christmas. Yeah. Like a week or two before Christmas. Um, David Chase directed it. Phil Abraham, who was our DP for most of the show and also a director and who is a great director now, um, was the director of photography on the commercial. Um, we filmed it in New, J New York and New Jersey, um, and it was awesome. So I always uh, tell you guys, I start my morning with Athletic Greens. This is our next partner, and this product is something I use literally every day. I started taking it because I just wanted better gut health. I wanted a little bit of more energy. I am not somebody that likes taking supplements and pills. Um, and I wanted something that kind of tasted good. So I found that with Athletic Greens. And if you're wondering what it is, it's literally one scoop. You mix it with water and you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, and they just make you feel like you start your day right. Yeah, and if you don't know what any of those words are, just try it and see how you feel. That's kind of how I felt, you know. Before I have my coffee every morning, I put a scoop of this in water. Um, that's the other thing is like you can just put it in water. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. You don't need to put it into a smoothie. You don't need to have that's it with right. peanut butter. It's just uh, some water. You mix it up. You put it down, and you're good, and you're done for the day, which I like. All right, guys, right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to Athletic Greens dot com slash pajama again that is athleticgreens.com slash pajama to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance should we tell the story about how we like flippantly said something last year at super bowl and how it like kind of came true definitely i just i just want to say I know a lot of people are going to be worried about me, like, oh, Rob's back in the rat race, you know, <laughs> oh, rat race. I, I was all right, guys, still sober. We made it through. Where are I just want to let you know I'm okay. Go, go ahead. Yeah, Yamie, tell them tell exactly. what we did. Exactly what people saw. You, you tell him because you did it. Oh, no, he's you in the rat race. <laughs> yeah. He's in the rat race now. Uh, so, okay. The last yeah. time I saw Jamie, crazy enough, before this was at this, was watching the Super Bowl at her place. And oh, yeah. uh, it's been a, a full year. Yeah. And we wow. were, uh, while we were watching the, Super Bowl or even like before that or something, there was a commercial on with, I forget what guys sing what song or whatever, but it was a commercial for like something in a kitchen. 
and the camera zoomed out and those two guys who sing the song were there and they were like, you know, if it was push it, it wasn't, but if the, that's salt and pepper, but they, if there was push it, they were like, yeah, just push it real good. Like something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to Jamie, I was like, we, or I said to Jamie, like, we need to do something like that. Like where we, we just do a fucking commercial, like bringing back up the Sopranos or whatever. And they fucking pay us. And it's awesome. This. And I guess Jamie was a little stoned because 15 minutes later, Jamie said to me, Hey, we need to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Cutter turned to her and went, that's what exactly what Rob said. Like, and, I'm, and I'm sure I was like, great idea, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, so we were, we kind of, you know, uh, you put had, it out in the universe. We put it out there kind of like not real, but we just said it. And then I was walking down the street in New York and my phone rang and my mm -hmm. manager said, would you be interested in doing a Super Bowl commercial? <laughs> Yeah. How quickly did you say yes? Uh, or did you need to hear what it was about first? Yeah. I mean, I definitely needed to hear some stuff. But once I heard David Chase, uh, yeah. Jane, I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. Let's let's the do commercial it. sick. I, I want to know what uh, our listeners thought. And, and if you're new to this podcast, yeah. um, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what kind of effect this this is going to. We're thinking that people would see this commercial and then be like, oh, yeah, Ron Myler and Jamie, let's look at it. what are they doing now? Click. And then maybe our podcast would come up. If you came to the podcast via that. Welcome. Uh, we've yeah. been doing this for two yeah. years. <laughs> And uh, it's a we have no structure. We just it's three friends uh, just having a conversation. It's very loose, and sometimes it's, it's great. Sometimes it's okay. And uh, yeah, <laughs> but we got, we always try. We always try, and it's our way of uh, getting together every week because we used to see each other every week in person. Now it's because uh, Jamie now lives in Austin. This is how we um get to see and talk to each other but uh yeah and also so this is this is something that definitely helped me get through the fucking pandemic when we were doing this every oh yeah week, once a week and then when we when we got to leave our houses and we got to go into the studio again it was just something that was so nice in a time where it was like there wasn't a lot of nice stuff going on yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Th this we started this right before the pandemic right the the fall of 2019 yeah yeah. We've only or really 2020. 2020. We were like, we've done this for over two of years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We so, were like I mean, just getting our footing when the pandemic happened. And then we were like, you know, zooming, whatever. We were just like figuring out what our show was. I can remember the first episode that we did, and the three of us sat on that table. Kasim, you and I had never met. Yeah, we've only like texted a few times. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why we decided to do it that way. So three years we could look back and go, God, you guys didn't even know each other that first yeah. day. Right. We didn't start putting our episodes up on because some of you are going to go look on YouTube for the right. old episodes, I'm sure. We didn't start doing that until like 17 or 19 or something like that. So uh, that is the reason why you won't find it early. We just didn't have video. We weren't videoing it yet. But now yeah. we do. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it's again, it's not a Sopranos pod. If you guys want a Sopranos pod, <laughs> there are other pods. There's talking. Well, we Sopranos. talk about it sometimes and we but have sometimes our, and our it comes Sopranos up naturally. family on. And yeah. I was in the Sopranos for just a couple seasons and, uh, try and spot me. And uh, I was not in the Sopranos. That's that's just a joke. But a lot of people wonder why I'm here. And Can I just say people are going to love that joke. That's a really good joke. That I'm is glad he has that. so many of those. You guys just <laughs> there's a lot of good jokes. Hope I hope you like want, that. I bring, more. I bring the comedy and it's that level every week. Uh, me and Rob met on a uh, what would you call that? A show or was it a nightmare? It was something we did. We did something together and then we became fast friends and then Rob introduced me to Jamie and that was the first episode of this pod. So it's changed a lot. As we got more comfortable with each other, I think we found our stride. And um, now here we are, a powerhouse on top. I think Spotify is about to pick us up for a lot of money, you guys. What were you, Jamie, were you about to say something about the first episode though? You were like, I remember we were in the first episode. Well, I just remember being like, what is this show? Like, what, what are we doing? Like, it was just like, okay, like, this is it. This is going to like, it was really just getting to know each other. Yeah. And there what was, treat. what a treat that's been. Yeah. And as, as close as we were then, it's like, it's so amazing for us to get to know each other better over the years. And then we started doing Sunday, every Sunday at your house and getting to 
know your family better and this it's just uh yeah it's been uh it's been fantastic we're talking about this like this is the last episode and that's been, that's been it for pajama pants all right so guys thank you guys so much bye um, well that's so fun okay so what was it like seeing david chase uh it was great to see him you know it's just like it was a very unique experience and i always say this about sopranos it's like you always it's been you know so many years since it's been done 15 years almost like you always think it's it's done like people still talk about it and that's wonderful but like you're not going to do anything again with it and then there's just always something like the 20th anniversary in january 2020 and this commercial it's just it's a testament to kind of what it means to people and like the value it still holds for them which is so cool but I just think it's crazy that this many years later, like we just did a Super Bowl commercial having to do with it. And honestly, doing it with Chevy was so, it was such a unique idea. I thought it was brilliant. Um, I have that truck dope. on reservation. I've reserved it. You did? You did? You're welcome, it's Chevy. The the minute it went live, before I even knew you guys were uh, doing this, I had the truck on reserve. Yeah. Why did you say that? I just said, you're welcome, Chevy. Like, like you know that one was ours that we did Take no that back. i don't want to lie on this podcast i never lie when well get- the car is dope it looks like it's from the future like the screen goes all the way across oh my god Cass, you're gonna love it i i gotta tell you and this chevy you can clip this and put this on all your <laughs> material i'm sure you're gonna but the reason i like this truck because i do want a truck or an suv I reserve this over the F-150 EV because this is from the ground up. They built this thing, whereas the F-150, they've kind of just like slapped electric batteries on an F-150 frame. This is an all uh, new built from the ground up Chevy Silverado. And um, I think it looks sick. And come 2023, when this thing comes out, I think it'll be 2023 by the time. Yes. I have no yes. idea. This is not an well, ad, by the way. This is it the, goes 400 it miles on a charge, which is crazy. Yeah. Power your house with this bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp wants to tackle some of the stigmas around mental health. Some of them being that therapy is for other people, that it you have to have something wrong, which is very untrue. It means that you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to understand them, not to avoid them and how to process them and deal with them. And also some people think maybe you should wait until things are so unbearable to try Mm -hmm. therapy. And that simply is not true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get bad and it can help you avoid those lows. We've all had our own experiences with them and can attest to that. That's right. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 eight hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. And Pajama Pants listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash pajama. That's betterhelp.com slash pajama, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash pajama. That's right. 80 million men and women in the U.S. experience thinning hair casts, yet it is still not openly talked about, which can make going through it feel scary, stressful, and uh, just adds to the problem. You know, I have known, again, it's, it's really nice when you get a new uh, person who wants to do ads on the show and you know it works. And I have many people in my life who use Nutrafol. I'm not going to say who because I don't, I don't know if they want to be called out, but we've had guests on this podcast who use Nutrafol. He knows by who it, he is. Love it. They know who they are. Multiple people. And uh, I actually went to, a, I was talking about this. I went to a friend's house month ago, walked in. First thing I see on the thing, Nutrafol swears by it. That's right. Nutrafol is formulated with patent. Nutrafol is formulated with potent botanicals to help you grow hair as strong as you are. And it's physician formulated to be 100% drug free. 
You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and using promo code PAJAMA to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer available anywhere and it's only available to US customers for a limited time, plus free shipping on every order. So get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code PAJAMA for hair as strong as you are. And let me say something. Much what? like our uh, therapy uh, sponsors, don't wait until you don't have to wait until you're a total mess. Start to early. hop on. Yeah, start early. You see a little bit coming on. Boom. Preventative. Use it as a preventative. That's right. Support the people that support your favorite pod. And if we're not your favorite pod, just support this one. I thought, to be honest, I thought it was going to be too much car for me. Like for me, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I really I, I drove that shit all over the place. You looked cool as fuck. It's not now, was shit. the lollipop dro- your idea or there, or was that David Chase's idea? That was Dave. So, so if you compare it to the real opening of The Sopranos, they really tried to replicate it frame for frame. It's for all you like super soprano people out there. So Jim had a cigar. So they were trying to think of what could I do to like, you know, to mimic that ish. And so David was like a Tootsie Pop. And they're like, yeah, there was like hundreds of Tootsie Pops on the set. And oh, then when that I was a you know, Tootsie Pop. OK, I would have said it was a Tootsie Pop. Yeah. And I we chose the brown one. So obviously it wouldn't stain my mouth. And it was the, I, I also did that. And I took like a sip out of a straw. But I think that that was the yeah. But I mean, there was even, you know, there was a shot of his hand with his gold bracelet. And they had a shot of my hand with like a tennis bracelet. They really were so thoughtful in 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 making it just like the original. Well, I just want to say, besides the paycheck, getting to see you is my favorite part of the commercial. Always. Besides Always. the paycheck. Besides the, the paycheck. The paycheck was incredible. I just want to say, and, just want to say besides, besides the paycheck. The paycheck. Yes. Yeah. And another piece of trivia, the restaurant that I meet Rob at in the commercial is the restaurant that they shot um, scenes from the Many Saints of Newark at. Ah. It was in the Jersey see- Shore. This is why we're the best non Sopranos Sopranos podcast. Yeah. yeah. Only I'm on sure this pod. somebody picked that up. I'm sure. Only on this pod can we confirm a lot. You know of what I want to know? For any of you Sopranos people that watched it, what were what was going through your mind when you were watching it? I want to know what people thought. Like, did you think this was a commercial for a car? Like, what did you think? When they heard that noise. A, when you heard like, the music. The song, yeah. And you saw a car and you saw like all the landmarks in Jersey. What did you think you were about to see? Do you think people thought there was a trailer for a series? I do. I do. And do you think people will be disappointed when they realize it's for a truck? No, I think they'll be like, oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, I I don't think that they might be disappointed that there's not going to be a series, but I don't think they're going to be disappointed that it's uh, just a commercial. But. Uh, Let's address the elephant in the room here, guys. Now, people are going to see this. It's going to stir up some feelings. They're going to be like, oh, there's Robbie all grown up. There's Jamie all grown up. We would love to see a series with those two in their lives currently. Now, you wouldn't. You didn't even watch Sopranos. Now you want. I've also if you're listening to this, I've I've only seen the first two seasons of Sopranos. I'd never. But I'm saying as a viewer, this is what's going to come up their feelings. Would you guys entertain a series where you guys are grown up in the Sopranos universe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yes, mean, I would do that series. Mm-hmm. It just feels like it's you would be an idiot to say no to something like that, right? Great. For well, me, you I'm know saying, what, too? You, it's me. like we also not only do we get like the cool experience of being on uh, an amazing show, but to do it over the course of 10 years and like really grow with our characters. Like we played kids to adults, like, and it wasn't, I mean, I can't speak for you, Rob, but I never like consciously thought like, oh, now Meadow is this more this or more that. Like I grew as a person with her and like the way they wrote her, you could just, you took a whole journey and that's, it's, I'm still, even though we weren't playing Meadow and AJ, like I'm still so connected to that role and her. It's one of those things like this many years later, I know I could drop right back in. And and that like doing the commercial gave me a little taste of that. 
What would you, you want know? to do different though? Nothing. Or you'd want to drop drop back in and be right. Well, because oh I, I think of I think of um, you know, my character was so young, you know, from 12 to 22 is so different than being 36, you know, like you can't, I guess you can, but it's, it's I mean, it's I'm hard. sure Meadow would be a mom married, but I don't know. Where is she? In Jersey, in the city? I th I think we were saying it was like I was looked like I was like driving from the city to you almost because I go through the toll. You know what's like there was a um it never really hit me like because we I guess there was one phone call me and you had where it hit me a little bit <laughs> but the whole thing like getting the phone call me like hey do you want to do this and then like even before it was like right when uh corona was like at its peak in december like yes. january so we're like oh at, at any moment this could get taken away and not happen yes. so i never wanted to get attached to it so i was just like oh you know whatever uh if it happens it's great if it doesn't it's great and it never really hit me and then um like we were even like the day that when we were going there i was just like no i don't i don't know like it feels right and there was one moment where like I, when me and Jamie were doing like the the scene together where she comes and gives me a hug and they're like, all right, like getting ready to fucking do it. And like, I looked at Jamie and like the camera crew was around this and I was like, oh, this is pretty crazy. Like, yeah. I remember looking like right at Jamie's face and like, I just like smiled and we smiled and we were like, oh, this is like, th this, this is really happening. Yeah. Well, we haven't done something like, I mean, even though it was like a couple of steps to each other and a hug, like we haven't been on a set together. Like the same cameraman, like the same steady cam operator, like, come on. And like That's David fun. standing there. I like those like, details. It was yeah. very surreal. You know, it was very, very surreal. And we spent so much of our life doing that together. And it was you like know? in Jersey and it just felt like it, it really did give that vibe of like, you know, there's like when filming Sopranos outside a lot, I guess it was winter a lot. I just have this like gray Jersey feel that like, I get like, I don't have the like Jersey shore summertime feel. I have like cold, yeah. like, you know, you're, you're not, you're it not was excited to be freezing by the way. It was like wind and the cold <laughs> and we were on the water. We were frozen. How many yeah. takes were, did you get for your hug? Not many. I don't know, but three, like, four? like two, three, three four. Yeah, three, it was four. like very like, all right, now we're doing this. And like, yeah, I was kind of looking at Jamie though. like, yeah, I was kind of looking at Jamie like, did we get it? Like, yeah, uh, you don't know because you're not looking at the uh, the monitor. You're not knowing how it seems, but you're just like, OK, this feels like uh, yeah. I, I only worked one day. Jamie had to work three days, but like, yeah, I, I, I was, spent two days in the car. Yeah. So it was just it was this feeling of like, even when I was in the car on the way back, I was like, oh, we're fucking done. Like. I know That's it. like I could go home now and my flight was the next day. I was in New York for two months because I happened to go there and happened to be there before this. But like it was like, yeah, all right, your flight's tomorrow. So it was like, well, we have to be done because I'm, yeah. I'm going back to Cali. Crazy. It was yeah. all fucking and Rob nuts. and Rob had COVID a month before we shot it. Yeah. yeah. I got COVID a month before I was in New York. I had he COVID was on a Christmas in the day. Clear. You guys have the the fucking maniac that my husband was to make sure that i did not get covid so this would not affect this tell commercial. us some of the highlights we, please everyone had to take a negative covid test to come to our house we Bo was mat was masked all day at school which is probably why after the commercial he was like "Fuck you and then got covid at school um he was just crazy like just bottles of purell everywhere just like didn't stop talking about it. Would text Rob and I just randomly all the time about it. Just you know, in his in his in his his beautiful cutter way. <laughs> he's in his element when there's a bit of chaos or like a chaos, bad. So he's chaos, like, oh, yeah. oh, like you know, you guys. I, was... I think guy. I think you know those chairs, Rob. That when we got this commercial, I was like, oh, I'm gonna splurge and buy my chairs that I want. Yeah. I think I might have gotten swindled. I wired oh. the money, and I think I got swindled. You guys. Wait, what? What you chair? wire money for a chair? They're in. They're made in London, and they could put it on Amex, but there was like a two or three percent fee on top of it, mm. and they're really expensive chairs. So I'm like, I'm not paying three percent on top. Like, I'll wire the money, and I did it through their Instagram website, customer service, back and forth. I, I heard wired you could also money. pay for them with iTunes gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I. 
I, Gabby wouldn't know. She doesn't have an iPhone. Mm. I would, Take that, Gabby. I got an invoice. Everything seemed official. They were ready to ship. They, I didn't have to, they were not meaning to be made to order. They were already ready in the warehouse. Why are the money? Yes, received. It's been two weeks. And there's every few days they'll write me back and be like, yes, early next week, early next week. And today I wrote and I was like, hey, if you don't send me a shipping label and a number, like I'm going to take action. I don't know what that means. But like, what the fuck can I do if these people swindled me? I, I'm fucked, right? Did, did you find the chair on Tinder? <laughs> no, on like the actual website. The Tinder swindler? You got swindled, game? And the wow. phone number is wrong on the website, but I found the phone number that goes to the guy that's emailing me. So I, I don't, I, Do I don't know. I, and it happened, much... it happened while I was watching the Tinder swindler. So like I was getting really panicked too, being like, oh my God, I've been swindled for these fucking yeah. chairs that I wanted so bad. It, they, it was a couple of thousand dollars. Like it was a lot. Well, of that's okay. But that, yeah, it's not as bad as I thought. Here, here's what I think. What did you like think a, it was? I thought you spent like 10K on chairs. Or something. I did. <laughs> oh, they said a couple of thousand. Okay. Oh, this is this is the biggest one of the biggest things that we have. Me and Jamie are New Yorkers, East Coast for people who are new to the pod. Me and Jamie are East Coasters, and when we say a couple, it could mean ten. But Casim and I actually think, but Kasim's it's also right. a couple's two. You are right. You're think, right. I actually think Casim's thing is right about this, but there's just a way, and I don't know if I think it's an East Coast thing. But it when is. you're up, you go like, oh, I'll be there in a couple hours, like that that doesn't mean to like it yeah. and maybe 10 is high but like you know three four five or like well, i'm just gonna well, call a couple people it doesn't oh, mean this two. is this is interesting this is the first i've ever heard of this we had this conversation on this pod never 100 <laughs> percent, gabby put it in here it's 10 because they're shipping from london also you know how many chairs a two, couple <laughs> a couple two chairs they're right. shearling a single they're handmade they're well, really here's cool. the thing. So these old these guys that like they don't know like Instagram. So he's in like email. He just he's probably a chair maker and he knows chairs, but he doesn't know how to do it. No, it's else. the customer service person. OK, look, I'm company. trying to make you feel better. I don't know. I, I feel like you you because probably but he okay. was so responsive when I was getting the chair, emailing me back at all times, hours. And now, yeah. like, what the fuck? Do they have a lot of followers on their Instagram page? Yeah. Yeah. So okay, now what so do I do? Just some like podunk. Well, here's what you do, right? You you throw your Instagram weight around. You you'll fucking put a post you're on right. Instagram. Queen. Yeah, and be like, hey, you're guess. a Super Bowl actress. But here's what I think. I think you're gonna get your uh you'll get your, your chairs. chairs. Yeah, I don't think it's fake. But they're not it's... writing me back. It's been a week and two weeks since I wired the money. They were ready to ship. Like, why aren't they being shipped? Yeah. But you said every couple of days they write you, right? Yeah, but they were writing me every minute when I was fucking ordering uh, them. And as soon as the money they not was wired. The phone? Are this, they not answering the phone? This now? No. Like a fiance. This is yeah. This is a problem. This this is. I'm Pajama sick to my stomach about it. I f I feel so sick to my stomach God. about it. We can turn our listeners into investigators, Jamie. We'll sick them on 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 these chair people. Do Once I say what it sure. is? Once we no, know not, for not sure. until we know. Company? Not until we know okay. you're swindled. We got to know okay. you're swindled. Yeah. How guess are we gonna what? know if, if they don't if they don't respond tomorrow? I'm swindled, right? If they if they don't swindle us, we might be doing ads for them in a couple of weeks. So easy. Next Let's, Super Bowl is gonna be ads for this. Yeah, two chairs, me and Jamie <laughs> reenacting. <laughs> so if they if I don't get anything by next week, I'm saying on the podcast what this was. Yeah. Okay. I think you want to give it a a little more just because like I what, wired what? them ten thousand dollars. They should give me a fucking. Let's give them some time. They're dealing with a lot. They they had Brexit. There's just a lot going on. And also there. this. Uh, have you seen those shipping container? They're uh, all held up in the Suez Canal. Yeah, they can't get yeah. by. It's you probably know? on maybe one of these. Maybe it's, 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 a, on, it's in Long Beach. Maybe it's a turning issue. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Just, so then you know write me and tell me that. Well, he doesn't know. He's not a shipping container. These uh, guys, driving they don't know shipping man. containers, Jamie. Why are you chairs. defending this? There's the reserves. They know four you're trying legs. to use the pot to bash them. We got to hold off on that, game. We might be doing ads for chairs. We might uh, be sitting uh, in three plus chairs come uh I'm upset for you, Jamie. I've spent money. I've spent thousands of dollars on chair, and I know all about how how much it, it means to like have all that money out in the middle. I have a, in this other room, I got an Eames lounge chair. Let me tell you something. I bought this son of a bitch through Herman Miller. That's you got to go through companies like that to get. This I should have done some first dips. 
It should have gone through first dibs. dibs. First dibs. You know what first dibs? I'm lost on all this. No idea. I got a piece of shit couch in my apartment. That's the only thing in there. You've and I got your mattress in a in a in a box right over there. I'm excited. I got it. We got to get it back to the night place. Well, welcome to the pod. If you're new, guys, this is it, baby. This is our uh, this is our our trio, our threesome, if you will. We've got a lot of good pods in the backlog for you guys to check out. I'm so happy you guys are on the Super Bowl ad. I'm a fan of the Chevy Silverado EV. This is kind of a win for all of us. And um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a special guest Ooh. on Pajama Pants. Just more word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Stick around. Hey, new sponsor here, Pajama Pants. Um, listen up if you're a small business owner. If you're making something new with your business to support you, Novo has built a new business checking just for you. Um, if you have a new small business or have had a small business, you know that going to a big bank um, is kind of like a one size fits all approach. There's usually a minimum requirement for a balance. Sometimes there's hidden fees. Um, so it's maybe worth looking into an alternative that can kind of tailor an experience just for you, the small business owner. So you can go to novo.co right now. You can submit your application in under 10 minutes. Everything is FDIC insured. Um, you get easy transfers, free ACH transfers, uh, mail checks, incoming wires, no hidden fees means you'll never be surprised with fees again. With so many seamless integrations, fans call Novo the Swiss Army knife of business checking accounts. Novo's responsive human, oh, so nice to have a human customer service is there to help you get started and be there for you as you grow. So sign up for your free business checking account right now at novo.co slash pajama. Plus, Pajama Pants listeners get access to over $5,000 in perks and discounts. Go to novo.co slash pajama to sign up for free. Novo.co slash pajama. Novo Platform Inc. is a fintech, not a bank. Banking services provided by Middlesex Federal Saving, FA member FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. Uh-oh, look who's joining. <gasps> it's our special Hi, guest Gab. live from the island. Hi, Gab. Even more beautiful than we last remembered you. Where this is in where the I world went when are I you? Dirty, guys, to this mysterious <laughs> island. It's uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Go for Gabby Gabriel Galon back to the pod, the pajama pants pod, the pod that she helped get off the ground. She edits the pod, she produces the pod. She makes it look the way it looks, and she is one quarter partner of this pod. <laughs> Welcome, hello, Gab. hello. Did you tell them about how you called me, Rob? So I called Gabby. Uh, no, on, you're calling Gabby now. I called Gabby on Sunday to ask her something, and and by the way, her birthday was Saturday, mm -hmm. and February she 2nd. had so, yes, yeah, she had a big party, mm -hmm. and so. I call her on Sunday. I go, I don't, I don't listen. You talk about a Rob party and he'd still be going. So I go, I don't know what I'm getting when I call Gabby. So I go, hello. And she goes, hello. <laughs> and I go, uh, Gab. Yeah. What's going on? And I'm like, oh, this is some party shit. Like she's up to something. She's in a closet fucking doing drugs somewhere. So she goes, I'm, a, I'm in the library. <laughs> what? There's still fucking libraries, dude. Oh, no. libra libraries are an institution. They're very important to the socioeconomic <laughs> fabric of this great nation of ours. I'll tell you all about it. I couldn't believe it. She's like, yeah, she's like, I'm off in the library. And I was blown away. I, I was <laughs> knocked off my feet. <laughs> Well, Gabby, your exp face. explain yourself. <laughs> what were you I, doing? I just like I'm trying to like put, go where you would be on a Sunday in a library, and I can't do it. The day after her thirtieth birthday. <laughs> Were you looking up uh, like ST? Were you looking up all the kinds of STDs you could have got from the night yes. before? All that money we give that. you, can you not afford Wi Fi? Is that what was going on? You Listen, the, guys, the, library the, internet, the internet at the library is actually much faster than my house for some reason. Is that what you were there for? Well, well, I usually work on Saturdays, but since I had my party, I didn't do anything. So Sunday I was like, I need to focus. So I went to a library. Wow. Wow. If, if you told me to young. go to the library right now, I would have no idea where to go. You can't even say <laughs> the, the word, last, right? When's the last library? When's the last, <laughs> when's the last time you were in a library? Me? School? Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> but I remember I used, the only reason I used to use my library card was because sometimes if I got locked out of my apartment, you could jimmy the lock 
with a card. And like, I was like, oh, this is the only card I have that I don't care about. The library card. Yeah. I think I used the restroom in one maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> They're important though. They are important. They're a place for like homeless people to go there when yeah, there's I've natural disasters. Yeah. People go in there. There's internet. There's uh, uh, computers. Books. And there's internet. And there's computers. <laughs> and books. I heard people watch porn in there. People books. have been caught jerking off in libraries. Haven't seen that yet. Keep an eye on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gabby, we miss you. Do you have anything you want to say to the fans? Yeah. How was your party? party? The party was fun. It was 90s themed. So there was lots of Pop Rocks and Bagel Bites and pizza nice. rolls oh awesome i don't i'm not really a party person so i kind of force myself to throw a party for myself and actually do something for my 30th or like actually celebrate because i don't really do that so it was nice to have all my friends around you guys didn't show up but that's okay I blame Cass. yeah i guess i had stuff to do i was in joshua tree <laughs> uh okay let's catch up with you are you currently yeah. seeing anyone no Single, still single, guys. Still not on the apps? Still not on the app. You know, I was thinking about it, though. Mm-hmm. I was like, I turned 30. Maybe I maybe I get yeah. on the apps. What are you, you trying know, to say? Guys. Apps are for old people? <laughs> <laughs> no, it just, I don't know. It felt like a time. I watched The Tindler Swindler. Oh, I started it halfway through. So good. Okay. Give it a, give it a looky-loo, Gabby, okay. whenever you have time. But what in the beginning of it you know they're just talking about tinder basically and as i'm watching it and they're really i mean i know we've talked about it in the pod and you know i met cutter like right before dating app started and as i'm watching it, i'm like you really have to put yourself out there it's not an easy thing like i know dating apps are the norm but i guess as for an old person like me that never did it and and like watching it it's it's difficult like you have to like really curate this image of yourself that you're putting out for the whole world to see it's it's a lot of pressure see that's the thing i'm also i feel like you have to want to text people and i'm not a phone texter person what like i like rather call i rather call or like facetime or i don't have iphone so i can't facetime you but like a video chat Ugh. she's <laughs> still without still an iphone, iPhone. <laughs> jesus she's christ the only person the- that shows up green on my phone <laughs> <laughs> all that money how can you not afford what we What's could afford? Wrong? We, we, still we split, works. We split the pod four ways. How come you yes. can't afford you, what we can afford? If we got you an iPhone for your birthday, would you switch? If it You're was gifted to me, I mean, yeah. sure, of course. I don't know. I've just had this. Well, it just still one works. might be on its way. <laughs> we can't. We honestly can't do business with you anymore. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Like We're, it's like getting hard. It's getting like I've put up with it for a long time, <laughs> and I'm. Done. It is. It is. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks for bringing this up. I I just got back from a bachelor party, and we're all on a group text thread. One guy, Ricky, has uh, an guy. Android. Ricky Horny. Uh, what? <laughs> Ricky Horny? No. <laughs> and uh, we will text each other the photos from the weekend, and they all come out low res because of this one guy because oh. of the one guy so we have to have a separate text thread where he's off of it and then we us iphone users trade photos and beautiful resolution high res and then when we need to commun- communicate as a group just just text only we go to this other thread that he's on it's not worth it you don't have any advantages i don't want to hear about anything like oh you could do whatever you want with your phone i don't care it doesn't make sense you are ostracizing yourself from society and we want you in. We want you to be a part of us. Uh-huh. Well, Ricky and I are going to create our own society. Mm. Well, Come you just need losers. two. Yeah, just two people. Can you can you can you give us the reason? Is it only because of the price that you're not on the iPhone, or are there other reasons? No, I've just I've always just had an Android, and I I don't really care that much. Even just like the word Android, it's like it's like. <laughs> Late it's blue. like the bad guys, you know, it's like it's not the cool thing. Are you on a like PC it. or app, a Mac right now? No. My, well, my brother bought me this MacBook, so I you're already know. in the ecosystem. You get a foot in already. You got you out of the library. Yeah, I like to be, you know, in two worlds, two worlds. Mm. Mm. No, I think you should just focus on one and try and do OK in one world mm. as mm. poor instead of poorly in two worlds. Do you know? I bet you'll have I bet you'll not have to work so much on Saturdays in order to go to the <laughs> library because your things are going to be working so well together. You're going to be yeah. so efficient. Yeah. 
like you're you're gonna have so much free time to date like we're gonna change your life with this iPhone. okay i didn't know that all of that would be open to me if i switched to apple but yeah you're probably too busy trying to work your weird phone when it does things wrong. <laughs> do they even have dating apps on android i love this jamie <laughs> no. Jamie, I love when you're razzing. I love razzing Jamie. <laughs> yeah. She is at it today. She's Me too. Attacking. And I can tell you why she she razzes Gabby. Because the, there's right. that little competition between the two of them. Yeah. Oh, that's right. One that's right. time somebody sent an email that said, mm -hmm. hey, Rob, Chasm, and Gabby. And Jamie was not happy. Jamie it's was still, pissed. it was two years ago, and it's still stuck in her craw. No, she yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. You can have that story, but Gabby knows how much I love her. How how much? How many many people do I send your way, Gab? The, okay, I've been wanting to tell you this face to face, Jamie. I very much appreciate you putting my name out there, and it's been a real blessing. These I got past. news for you. This is not face to face. Okay, this well, is this Zoom, is the closest Zoom I can get. Zoom. She's not here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know how you could have told her even more face to face. Pleasure. Facetime. Facetime yeah. on an iPhone. Mm, we could have done it that way. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I feel like look, we have too much headroom. Of, it's because of who you no are. You don't have to thank me. Every time like somebody's telling me they're starting a podcast or like they need some help, I'm like, call my girl Gabby. <laughs> and they're like, oh, she doesn't have an iPhone. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know how Gabby thanks us? Price hikes. Price hikes. Yeah. She's worth it. Absolutely worth it. hundred so percent. And and just like a landlord every year. Right. Every year. Every percentage. year. Come on. Come well, on. Yeah, every well, quarter. There's there's Brent. Yeah. Oh, oh she, said, she said every quarter. Every, <laughs> yeah, random day. Jamie. Every, every episode. <laughs> Dude, we get the fucking we get the Gabby email on like the letter head. You know, she has like her yeah. professional stationery. There's I Gab. do want you to give us a state of the union, a state of the pod, you know, um, from your point of view as the fourth member of this uh, uh, group. You see it from the outside. How are we doing? What are things we can do to improve? Um, okay, well, the biggest thing is you guys, you, you guys need to go to Austin and do one there mm -hmm. with Jamie. Agree? Sure. I agree. Agree? Yeah. You guys keep talking about it, but it has yet to... She's right. Happen. We do keep talking about it. Also, there's two of us here and one there, so Jamie could come to LA, but I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would it would be really cool. For her to come here, but that's, we'll, that's Jamie. She well, I'm working. You're I'm already working. halfway. You're in New Mexico. I right? will do my best. We should offer her a job. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. If only she could edit. <laughs> yeah, you think we could afford a second editor there, pal? Yeah. She. Do you need an assistant editor, Gabby? <laughs> no, I got. I got it. I'm good. Obviously, uh, our pod is, I think, very easy. We we barely need to cut anything out. Um, but I'm glad, you know, we could get you started on your career and we're the, your favorite. <laughs> you know, you really yes, owe it thank all you, to Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Cass, especially you. Um, okay. Any questions for Gab before we let her go? I have a question. Yeah. I want to know okay, what since you're I doing. Turned, since I turned 30, do you guys have any advice for 30s and or any life advice in general? Yeah, great question. It all starts going downhill, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Jamie, do you remember when you were 30? <laughs> You're so rude. What advice would you give Cutter Vaguely. when he turns 30? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Amy. Got her. <laughs> we're all Raz. We all Raz. I would say, like, take that trip, take that chance, answer that text. Like have, like, just don't think so much about stuff, you know, when it comes to like living, have fun. Yeah. Okay. I'll try and yeah. do that more. I get think, an iPhone. Yeah. Get an iPhone. <laughs> okay. I think yeah, um, the older you get, the more important the relationships in your life are. So when you're, um, you know, maybe once a year, a couple of times a year, just assess the relationships in your life. And if you see there's some that where you're like, man, this, this, you know, every single time there's always issues with this person and this, it's like, you know, maybe even going to them and letting them know how you feel, or, you know, if you have to, if that doesn't work, uh, you know, thinning out the herd, as they say, like, I only have five friends. Because mm -hmm. I thinned and out I'm my herd, them. baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool cast and regular cast. <laughs> right. Love them both. 
Uh, that's good advice. I, you know, I think you're doing great. You're, you're in a field that's growing and you're uh, a valuable asset. I'd say it's never too late in your thirties. This is just advice for other people that are in their thirties. You can start over and do something completely new and it would make no difference. Like you are not like concrete yet. You're still flexible enough to try that thing you always wanted to do. And then if like by 35, 36, 37, you're not seeing any like movement or traction in it, then you can like start worrying or <laughs> you take, take a nine to five. Do you know what I mean? That's, and, and here's the other thing, right? Do what you love. So basically just keep editing this pod. That's right. This pod. If you ever left us, we would trash you publicly. Well, <laughs> she, she knows that I would like trash her to all the yes. other podcasts that she's editing. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'd be like, oh, we, we, uh, Gabby plays us all the racist stuff that you guys say that she cuts out. Yeah. Oh, here, <laughs> here's a compilation of Gabby saying the yeah. N word. <laughs> I have a question because we actually never we never come to you and we're like, can you take this out? We don't. Mm. I have one Do like you, twice, maybe. You have? Yeah. Because I said something racist. Well, also, you know what we do is we we will say something wrong and immediately realize and go, hey, Gabby, take that out. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We do it. We do it yeah. live. Oh, yeah. You, know? you tell me. You should tell me. But if I say That's something anti-Chinese, you keep it in. I want the people to know. Yeah, all your racist stuff. All your racist stuff against Asians, Casim. Well, oh, it's all she this. could ruin you, man. I was hoping you guys would be paying attention to the Olympics. She right can now. cancel you. No, it's hashtag a, that's cancel okay. Cass. I love my Chinese. I love my Chinese people. You know what would be really great if if it was like if somebody reached out to Gabby and they were like, "We'll give you a million dollars, but you have to put together a clip that cancels Rob, mm -hmm. cancels Casim," and mm -hmm. she's like, "Okay, no problem," and, and then cancels Jamie Lynn. She's like, what would Jamie's like cancel reel? Look I don't like? think you know, Jamie like, out of the three of you, Jamie yeah. doesn't have. She'd be like, I don't love We'd In and Out. We'd have to stitch together. <laughs> We'd have to stitch together different things. In and Out fries are not as good as McDonald's. You're like, whoa, they're Jamie. not good at. They're not good at all. Neither are Chick Fil A's. Whoa, whoa. I actually will go on the record and say I don't like In and Out. <sighs> Jamie is canceled. I don't like it. Fucking bitch. Well. Wow. I, I, I would go along with your other controversial statement about sandwiches, Jamie. Yep. <laughs> Can you imagine if they McDonald's did a list? McDonald's <laughs> all day, every day. If they did a list of the Forever. top 10 worst things we've ever said on the pod, and then you compared it to Jamie. <laughs> yeah. no, that's... Jamie, Jay, one of those on Jamie's list would be the nicest thing me and you have ever said. I know. I'm working on like saying something bad about every race. Uh, I like check it off every time I do. I'm, you I'm know what close. story I still think about all the time that I love so much is when Cass told us a story about when he was elementary school and everyone had to stand on the <laughs> map where they were from and he had to go to like the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> he was in a bush I, off to the side. Yeah, 100 yards away. I don't know bush. why. Sometimes I look at you and I just think of that story. You see little Cass. Like, <laughs> He's just walking with his head down. Yeah. Across the schoolyard. I had a weird fucked up uh, life at points, but it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we miss you, Gab. When, when love you, Gabby. I love you guys. Thanks for coming on. And by the way, we do need to go to Austin. Jamie does not. We go to Jamie. God we it. go to Jamie. Yeah, yes. or both. We'll, we'll make both happen. But I'm very excited to go to Austin and see Jamie to make this pod better for you, Gabby. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was nice to see you guys. Happy you birthday, too. Gabs. Thank you. I will see Bye, Gabby. you on my computer later. Bye. Let's close out with some emails. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. By the way, I've been on the uh, Perry Caravello uh, chat a lot lately, and just our our listeners are great. Charlotte's up in there. We're laughing. Tom is great. Perry's great. We're, there is a lot of laughter going on over on Perry Caravello's channel, guys, if uh, you are a fan. He is amazing. All right. Here's, some, here's one from Lewis. It says, hi, I love your podcast. It came from... Talking Sopranos. You came from Talking Sopranos. Welcome. Um, that's that's a Sopranos podcast. For Michael Imperioli, Steve Sharippa. We've me and Jamie have been on it. It's yep. great. They it's refuse a, to have Castle. They refuse to have me, even though I played uh, Rat Tucci in season four. Shout out, call me Rat Face Tucci. I uh, love your podcast. I came from Talking Sopranos and Made Women as well. Made Woman. Dre, Dre DiMatteo's Mateo. podcast. Shout out to Dre. Was watching your pods whilst they was happening, but now as they finished, I'm listening more. It's nice to hear and see the cesspit of life and emotions 
and true renditions of your lives you talk about. What is going on? This sounds like the guy who sold you your chairs, Jamie. I'm, a <laughs> I'm big, too dumb to know what the word cesspit is. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Sopranos. Now, I have said Sopranos. You maybe won't read it, but big up AJ and Meadow living life and exploring different paths through a podcast. Sopranos is the best show of all time. The best. Bring some more guests on once in a while. Cass, and watch the yeah. show, my G, and talk about alien conspiracies more. Peace, Louis H. Louis, thank you so much. I will think about watching The Sopranos. Um, if people want to email us, by the way, askpajamapants at gmail.com. That's right. Askpajamapants at gmail.com. We're on Instagram as well. We do take uh, questions from that occasionally. You know what I was going to say is just like, if it, it's, I think when we think about, so I didn't tell my family uh, that we did a yeah. Super Bowl commercial. So they're all just fucking totally shocked, surprised, blown away, whatever. But I think it's gonna like, I wish we could get the reactions of pajama pants, like listeners mm. from day one, when they just like randomly see us on the Super Bowl, especially because a lot of the emails we get are like that one where it's like, oh my God, you guys are so open and honest and you tell us everything and you share everything about your lives. And like, this is like the biggest thing we've done in a long time. And we didn't say a fucking word about it. Like Jamie and I were in New York at the same time. I didn't tell my like, friends. Yeah, like pretending that Jamie was in some like random place, like not saying where she was. And me and Jamie were like seeing each other. So it was like a very, you know, it Did was you crazy. Feel dirty, feel like a little liar. It felt a little weird, but the payoff I knew was going to be good because I knew it was important. People were going to see this and be so happy. So, guys, let us let us know what was it like for the OG pajama pants people yeah. when you saw Jamie Lee and your boy during the Super Bowl? OK, here's one from uh, Drew. Hey, pajama pants crew. My name is Drew. Pronounced Drew. OK, it's with a V. Drew, love the show. It's also with an H. <laughs> yeah, it's and a U. Oh, a char a character on the show I'm on right now's name is Drew. Is it spelled D H R U V? Yep. Maybe this is them. Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, love the show. Insert generic ass kissing here, guys. We want the full ass kissing. So no, no, no. I like that. I want. Yeah. I want it. Uh, Give it ha -ha, to but us. But really, was a big fan of Robert and Jamie since Sopranos and Casim. You've been awesome. An awesome find and listening to the show. I was also a big fan of the original G4 shows, especially Attack of the Show. So it's awesome that you were part of the new one. My question came to me as I watched The Challenge, an MTV reality show where reality TV stars compete for a cash prize. Uh, On that show, there was a new contestant by the name of Amber Martinez. I had no knowledge of her TV past, but found myself rooting for her and having this innate caring feeling for her. I later realized that she kind of reminded me of Jamie from The Sopranos in looks and a bit with her accent and that's why i liked her so my question is have you had this innate response to someone for the good or for the bad just because because they reminded you of someone else thanks drew she attached a photo here and gabby will put it up i can see i i definitely feel like you have the maybe like the hair the skin color and like the like from outside i could see but when you like really look in i think she looks very different but it looks like Amy when she was younger maybe uh, uh, she's very cute. This girl, um, you know, you, you watch this show. Have you, have you seen her? I, I love the show. I don't, I don't know her, but you what love I want to challenge. what's her name? Love Amber the challenge. Stevens? Uh, Amber Martinez. Now this is actually the question he had is something I just had a conversation with you about, right? Or was it someone else? Uh, I think it was somebody else. Cause yeah. I, I actually had a written down to talk about today, which was, it's something like this, where it's like, if somebody mm -hmm. reminds you of somebody else, mm -hmm. how do you feel towards them? Maybe we did have a conversation about this, but my thing was when I'm on a dating app, yeah. if I see a girl who her name is the name of somebody like in my family or like something like that, I feel very uncomfortable. I, I don't like to yeah. swipe. Uh, yeah, like, you know, like my sister or like my mom, yeah. like if I, if I brought a girl to my family and was like, Hey, this is the same name as you. Like, I just, I, right. I don't know something about that weirds me out. Yeah. Yeah. You won't find that with my family too often. You know? No, no, you're not going to find, I'm not going to come across an Omar on a dating app, you know, or an NIAT. You might. Um, your mom's name is NIAT. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, I haven't seen any of those. You've seen any NIATs? No, I wouldn't even know where to start. Do you start that with an I? E. Mm. 
E, uh, okay, so here's someone, I, I, I had this conversation with either you or somebody else. When I see Carrie Fisher and Lucille Ball, I have a feeling, like when I see Carrie Fisher, she reminds me of my mother. And I have this, whenever I watch her, I have a very, uh, like a warm feeling mm -hmm. for her. She was also an mm -hmm. alcoholic. She was a, a, a member of, uh, you know, 12 step. It's like a lot of weird connections that I had. And I just, the way she talked, she was like, kind of like, you know, very, um, she just told it how it was and, and Direct. she was kind of funny, but filthy, you know, but in a funny yeah. way. And my mom is the exact same way. And so when she, passed away it like lingered in me a little bit because mm. it reminded me of like oh my this might feel like be what it's like when my mom passes you know mm. Every, totally beloved uh you know had a lot of issues in her life that she like overcame and maybe was still dealing with um and then the same thing with lucille ball I, not necessarily because she reminds me of my mom little things but uh i just watched the nicole kidman movie with Har javier bardem and then i watched this uh, lucy documentary but i have the same feeling like I felt like I, I could have known these people. It's visceral. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just, yeah. Who are those people for you? Do you have well, any like that? My favorite podcast is your mom's house. Yeah. Christina P and Tom yeah. Segura and Tom Segura looks exactly like my dad. That's mm -hmm. so that that's true. I've heard you say that. Yeah. yeah. And when I did their podcast, I actually put a picture of my dad up and they like, but it's, it's weird when you, cause when you talk to somebody and you tell them they look like somebody, cause Tom is like, everybody says they know people look like me and no one looks like, no one really does. So, you know, I don't know if he really thought he did or not, but when I see it, I'm like, oh my God, my dad looks exactly like Tom, but they have like the beard, the shaved head, you know yeah. what I mean? They have that look, but I don't know. I don't, I, I, I go around. I'm trying to think in my life, do I even experience that where I'm like, oh, this person looks like this person to me. I don't know. Right. I, I don't have that. Hmm. Yeah. You, I can't think of, I can't think of anyone specific, but I have had that reaction to people in my life. Like, even if it's like, you know, a waiter that all of a sudden I'm like, they feel like they remind me of somebody so much. And when that happens, like I, I can't stop staring. I have to say something. So yes, I've, I've had that happen to me a number of times in my life. I just can't think of a specific well, time right now. Yami is the only one out of us who has children. Does that happen when you have kids where like you see them do things and you're like, Oh, you remind me of your fucking dad. Oh, or, or with me <laughs> with Bo, Bo all the time. I'm like, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where you're coming from right now. Cause I, it's like a flashback to my childhood Yeah, and it pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Oh yeah. Cause who are you really angry with yourself? Myself. You know? Of course. Our kids are literally a, just a reflection of what we need to work on in ourselves. And it's funny too, because whenever people with this podcast sent, like a, we've had a lot of emails where it's like, oh, this person looks like Rob. And I always hate the people who they show. Sure. Yeah. You know, Try I'm always me. like, oh, I mean, person. I've had a couple where they're like, I get told I look exactly like you. And I'm like, mm. that's, let me tell you what that is right now. That's guys trying to get laid. Yeah. I see it all the time. All the time. So guys, like girl, girls are like, oh, it it guys tell me I look like Michelle Pfeiffer. And then you go, they do. Uh, don't because, know about that, uh, big guy. <laughs> where are you? But that's what happens. But listen, I've uh, I've been a guy who has maybe had a couple too many drinks one night and been at a bar and also thought a girl looked like Michelle Pfeiffer. And we'll leave it at that. But yeah, I just want to, you know, just just throwing that out there. So I get it. Yeah. But, but what happened that just so you know, that is not people actually thinking that that girl looks like you. That's just that maybe guy sometimes I see it. I have like a very specific like eye forehead shape that I think there's a lot of yeah, I see. That I see Bo when I when I see you do certain faces, I go, that's a face I've seen Bo make. <laughs> I just see Bo a lot. It's in the smile, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, that's it. Welcome to the pod if you're new. By the way, Tom Segura, Christina P. We have a, a boatload of guests uh, that have been on our show. Just go take a look. Go through our back catalog. Lots of great episodes. Some of the people uh, that you love have been on the show and will be on the show. So. A lot of people from Sopranos mm -hmm. also, but also we right. are we are going to make it a thing. Jamie brought this up and I fully agree where we're going to start doing this pod at a certain time of the week so that we can start booking guests. We don't book any guests yeah. because it's always like, oh, when are we going to do it? We don't really know this. We got to get a certain time in. Cool. And it's got to be a time yeah. where people in New York are not sleeping. Yeah. yeah. So we got to figure it out, guys. And I want to thank uh, Gabby for being our guest this week. Great to see you, Gab. Thanks, Gab. Thanks, Gab.
Oh yeah. And then by the way, if you guys are new, uh, we're on Instagram, email us, askpajamapants at gmail.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, click subscribe and click the notification bell. That way, you know, when our videos go live every week, which right now is every Tuesday and Rob's off the grid. Don't even try to get a hold don't of Rob. Even. No, just reach me at pajama, pajama pants yeah. podcast you on can Instagram. Come through me, me and, or Jamie, we're on Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, so is our pod. So we, uh, thank you guys. And we'll hopefully, uh, and stay tuned. Week. You might be, uh, helping me seek revenge for my chairs. Get oh, ready guys. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed the merch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs>